गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस आई एम मुदिश्री एस बागलवाड़ी योर साइंस टीचर संकल्प लर्निंग सॉल्यूशंस इन द लास्ट क्लास वी डिस in the last class we discussed uh, regarding the concept of nutrition in plants and all we also discussed in detail regarding the photosynthesis process what all events are taking place during photosynthesis which is the site of photosynthesis and all and also today we are going to discuss the nutrition in animals nutrition in human beings first before going to the nutrition in animals we are going to discuss what about the nutrition in simple organisms who what do you mean by simple organisms so we know that on earth immediately or directly the multicellular organism did not originate everything started from simple then to complex so like that the living organisms life has been started on earth with only one cell so such organisms which have one cell are called as unicellular organisms so first we are going to discuss regarding the nutrition in unicellular organism then we are going to discuss regarding the nutrition in human beings now let us begin fine okay so nutrition in simple organism we are going to consider amoeba amoeba is a unicellular organism it, a, it is a microscopic which cannot be seen with the naked eye and it is a fresh water body organism means this is a aquatic organism you can find these organisms in fresh water bodies when we see the structure of amoeba it will be consisting of one cell and it does not have any definite shape so these have a shapeless cell and their cell membrane or we can say the plasma membrane the outer layer of a cell is will be having a finger like projections as you can see here these finger like projections are called as pseudopodia or we can say false legs these will act like a legs function like a leg but these are not true legs that is why these are called pseudopodia and inside the cell as usual we will, it will be having the nucleus and the fluid called as cytoplasm along with the nucleus and cytoplasm it ha also has certain vacuoles or a bag like structures inside them which are called contractile vacuoles which helps them in osmoregulation that is controlling of water movement inside and outside the body as these live in the water as these are aquatic then it will be also having a bag like structure where food is present which is called as food vacuole so this is the brief structure or a brief note on structure of a amoeba now let us see how amoeba takes the food so the amoeba type the type of nutrition in amoeba is holozoic holozoic means it will take the food inside and the digestion absorption assimilation all the steps of the digestion or we can say the nutrition will begin or will happen inside the body of an organism okay so first let us discuss the steps in nutrition so we have five steps in nutrition that is ingestion means taking the food inside the body next one is digestion breaking down of the larger food particles into smaller particles okay next we have absorption the digested or the broke down broken down particles will be there it will be absorbed assimilation the nutrients present in the food will be absorbed or assimilated or used by the cells okay ingestion the waste created is released out so these are the five steps in nutrition in animals ingestion take in digestion break down absorption absorb assimilation utilization make use of then uh, uh, the last one is ejection that is eject or we can say remove out okay so in amoeba also we can find these steps so as you can see this is a food particle just a minute uh as you can see this is a food particle okay this is a food particle and the food amoeba is here so the food particle has been uh, that is the, the amoeba is taking the food particle by 
extending its pseudopodia extending its pseudopodia means it is surrounding the food particle okay using the pseudopodia then once it enters the amoeba's body it will the food particle will be in the form of a one certain bag you can see a vacuole means a empty space with a food particle so this is called as a food vacuole okay so in the cytoplasm of the amoeba there will be digestive enzymes digestive enzyme enzymes means enzymes are the chemical substances which helps in a chemical reaction i repeat they help in a chemical reaction they are not involved in a chemical reaction means they will not react or anything they help in a chemical reaction okay so enzymes are called biocatalysts here the enzyme present in living organism are called biocatalysts so the digestive enzyme means the enzyme which helps for digestion will be present in the cytoplasm these enters into the food vacuole the enzymes enters into the food vacuole and inside the food vacuole itself the food is digested into a simpler molecules and absorption takes place assimilation takes place okay then finally ejection takes place ejection means the removal out that is removing out of the uh, waste substances just a minute uh, See, here the first step, amoeba senses the food that amoeba got to know the food is near it to it. Then pseudopodia surrounds the food, that is second step. Then food is enclosed or closed in a food vacuole. Okay, so inside the food vacuole, what will be present? Food plus water. Then enzymes from the cytoplasm enters the food vacuole. When they enter, the digestion begins. Food is digested and soluble materials means which will be dissolved are absorbed by the cytoplasm and used up by amoeba and the undigested uh, uh, what is that the substances will be expelled out expelled means removed out from the body so ingestion ingestion happens here this is ingestion step okay ingestion happens then digestion absorption assimilation in this step and then ejection or ejection okay these are regarding this is regarding the holozoic nutrition in amoeba then now we have human digestive system we are going to learn the nutrition in human beings as we all know that nutrition in human beings is also holozoic means the food is digested absorbed assimilated inside the body itself so it is a holozoic nutrition when we consider the part of a digestion, the part of a digestion or the system which works for a digestion process is called as digestive system. In digestive system, we have again two subsystems, two subsystems, okay? So the first subsystem is elementary canal. The second one is digestive gland. Elementary canal means which covers the whole digestive system from mouth to anus. So, our digestive system begins from the mouth. You can see it is the mouth. Okay. Then it has a tongue and teeth. Inside it is esophagus or a food pipe. Food pipe is connected to a stomach. Stomach is connected to a coiled like structure which is called small intestine. And you can see the not most, most coiled structure which is called large intestine. Then it, uh, the liver. You can see this is a liver and this is a pancreas these are called accessory parts of digestive system these are not involved directly in the digestive system but these are necessary these the secretion the secretions of liver and the pancreas are necessary for digestion so these are accessory glands we can call the these as just a minute the liver and pancreas, we can call it as accessory glands, means which will help for the digestion and which are necessary for the digestion. Accessory glands. Accessory glands. Okay. Then, uh, then the last part is anus. So, as the digestive system in human beings starts from mouth, ends with the anus. It has two openings. 
for ingestion the separate opening for ejection the separate opening that is why digestive system in man or a human being is called as complete digestive system complete digestive system next when we come to the nutrition in human beings as i said the parts of the digestive system then how the process of digestion occurs let us see so in the mouth let us go part by part how digestion occurs so in the mouth when you take the food the food is subjected or first it is acted by the teeth so what the teeth does it will convert the larger particles of a food into smaller particles that process or the chewing process is called mastication it is called mastication okay and the tongue uh, tongue will be there no tongue will roll the food roll the food it makes the food into a small mass it helps to rolling the food and we know that inside the mouth we will be having some juice what is that juice this is nothing but the salivary juice which is secreted by salivary gland secreted means released so here when you just press you can feel you are getting more saliva in your mouth because here salivary glands are present in this region okay so these salivary glands release or secrete salivary juice in salivary juice enzyme is present the enzyme name is salivary amylase so this salivary amylase it is also called as tynil tylin which which digest some of the sugar or some of the carbohydrate present in the food not complete carbohydrate some of the starch or a carbohydrate when it is present in the food it is partly partly digested by the salivary amylase into sugar into a sugar which is called maltose maltose is a sugar example of sugar then after that Mm, the food is converted into ball like mass and when it goes inside it will enter into the food pipe or esophagus so that mass of a food which goes into the esophagus is called as bolus so from the mouth the food enters into the esophagus in the form of a bolus ball like mass mass of a food so in the esophagus as you can see the figure here so esophagus is nothing but it is nothing but a long tube a long tube it does not have any other parts so here only the movement of food takes place from the mouth to the stomach from the mouth to the stomach no digestion takes place inside the esophagus okay so no enzymes are present in the esophagus the food molecule enters into esophagus or move in a esophagus in the form of a wave so let me show you in form of a wave like this okay so when it forms in the form of a wave like this this movement of the food in the esophagus in the form of a wave or in the form of a rhythmic contraction and relaxation see here the esophagus contracted here it is relaxed here it is contracted here it is relaxed so this movement is called as peristalsis this movement is called peristalsis okay the peristaltic movement occurs in the um, esophagus hmm? so it is p e r i s t a l s i e s peristalsis fine uh okay see here these are the parts where you have the salivary glands we have three pairs of salivary glands one is here parotid gland okay the one is here submandibular gland the one is under the tongue beneath the tongue so it is sublingual gland then see the food enters pharynx then pharynx is a common passage for air as well as food then the upper uh, esophagus so here you can see the contraction and relaxation of the esophagus this is called the peristalsis so when it when the food enters from the esophagus to a stomach there will be some sphincter here like this sphincters some extra foldings like this so these are called as sphincters this is called esophageal sphincter 
esophageal sphincter you can see here so this esophageal sphincter will not allow the food from the food pipe to the stomach suddenly to the stomach so it will control the movement of the food okay that is why the esophageal sphincter act or prevents the uh, fast flow of food from the esophagus to the stomach then the next one is stomach so as you can see stomach is a large organ so what happens in the stomach stomach has a ability to stretch has a ability to stretch so the muscular walls as the stomach is made up of muscles it can stretch okay the muscular walls of the stomach helps for the grinding of food or for mixing of the food so if you eat chapati or any sabji so both will mix in the stomach the digestion functions are taken care by gastric glands so inside the stomach inside the stomach stomach wall there will be certain glands which are called gastric glands glands are nothing but these are the organs which are meant to release certain juices certain enzymes okay so okay the digestion functions are taken care by the gastric gland present in the walls of a stomach so these glands release an substance called as hydrochloric acid hcl stomach will be having hcl the main function of hcl is it kills the bacteria or microorganisms present inside the food okay uh, or any germs present inside the food then as well as hydrochloric acid also activates it also activates an enzyme called pepsinogen not pepsi pepsinogen is an enzyme released by a gastric gland okay which is present in a gastric juice it is activated only by the action of hydrochloric acid once it is activated that active enzyme is called as pepsin mm, one second yeah it is called as pepsin so these pepsin acts on the protein pepsin acts on the protein especially so pepsin act on the protein and converts into a, a simple uh, we can say a simple form not a simplest form just a simpler form we can say simpler forms okay next along with the hydrochloric acid and we can say the pepsin the stomach wall is made up of a mucus so that the mucus helps the stomach wall from burning action of the hydrochloric acid when i say acid you can see the car the first property of acid is it burns then how can our stomach is prevented by the hydrochloric acid action it is due to the presence of mucus the hydrochloric acid action on the stomach wall is prevented okay then uh fine so here you can see the slide view the microscopic view of the gastric glands the glands which are present in the stomach okay mm. fine next part of a elementary canal is small intestine where complete digestion of food is occurs it is highly coiled part of a digestive system okay it secretes a juice called as intestinal juice the juice present in small intestine is intestinal juice these intestinal juice will be having certain enzyme which acts on carbohydrates proteins and fats and also the small intestine will be having good friendship or good connection with the liver and pancreas from the liver bile juice is secreted the one more important note on liver is it is a largest gland of our body and it secretes a juice called as bile juice which will help in breaking down of fats so that breaking down of fats is called as emulsification that breaking down of fat is called emulsification the bile juice secreted by the liver is stored in a structure or a organ called gall bladder so whenever intestine that is the food enters into the intestine the bile juice from the gall bladder will come or will come in interaction inside the small intestine with the food then it dissolves or sorry it breaks down the fats present inside the food 
Next, we will be having the pancreas. The pancreas are also in the contact with the small intestine. Pancreas releases pancreatic juice in the small intestine. These pancreatic juice will be consisting of certain enzymes, okay, which are called as uh, uh, amylase, pancreatic amylase, and it has a, a trypsin, the enzyme named trypsin. So when you uh, get an enzyme named amylase, we should remember that it always acts on carbohydrate. Means pancreatic amylase converts carbohydrate into simpler molecules. Same way, the trypsin acts on the proteins and converts them into simpler molecules. Then in the intestine, the intestinal wall, we can say, just a minute, mm, this is an emulsification. That is, larger fat molecules will be converted into smaller fat molecules by the action of by Next, uh, one minute, small intestine. Mm, yeah. Here, in the wall, inside the wall of small intestine, you can see a small finger-like projections, right? So, these projections are called as villi, which are present inside the wall of the small intestine. So, these villi helps in absorption of a food. These villi helps in absorption of a food. Next, see, these are a beautiful, uh, this is a beautiful image of a villi. Then after that, the food enters into the large intestine. And remember, complete digestion has been taken place in small intestine. Only in the large intestine, what happens? The extra water or important minerals or substances which are present in the food is reabsorbed again. And the large intestine will be having three parts, colon, cecum and rectum. Large intestine reabsorbs the water from the undigested food. The undigested food enters into the small intestine. And again, the water is absorbed by the small intestine. Okay. Then uh, the undigested food will be converted into. So this is the image of a villi. Uh, the undigested food will be converted into a um, ball of or not a ball, a mass of a food that is undigested food, which is called feces which will be stored in a rectum, which will be stored in a rectum. And when the removal, the removal of a pieces takes place through the anus. This is called defecation. The process is called defecation. So this is regarding the digestion process in human beings. At the first session, you feel that you will understand the digestion. But the main thing here is which gland produces which juice, which enzyme is present in which juice, and what that enzyme will do? See, first one, salivary amylase, it acts on carbohydrate. Second, pepsin in the stomach. Uh, so it acts on protein. Hydrochloric acid activate pepsinogen into pepsin. Next, small intestine. In small intestine, we will be having intestinal juice, bile juice, and the pancreatic juice. In the intestinal juice, chymotrypsin is present, which acts on protein. Then in the pancreatic juice, trypsin and pancreatic amylase is present. Amylase means it acts on the carbohydrate. Trypsin acts on proteins. Then bile juice acts on fats to convert into um, the uh, complex fats into the simple fats, which is called emulsification. And pancreatic juice also contains an enzyme called lipase, which acts on fats and convert them into a simpler molecules. Then the undigested food goes to the large intestine. The defecation occurs through the anus. So this is regarding uh, the brief uh, note on the digestive system of human beings. I hope the concept is clear. In the upcoming session, we are going to learn in detail regarding one more important process. Now what happened? We are in a condition or we are in a situation where the food is completely digested. It, the food is absorbed and the food is assimilated. Food is absorbed. How it assimilates means how the food is utilized. That is by a process called respiration. So let us study in detail regarding the respiration in the next class. Until that, take care. Have a nice day.